All right, let me repeat that. Today's training is going to be more so an overview of the listing process um, and also just really how to position yourself to find opportunities, book appointments and stuff like that. As you're out there, you know, door knocking or you're talking to buyers, there's a lot of buyers right now that need to sell. They may have a property they need to sell. And if you're not versed or don't know what to say or how to you know, present yourself to book that opportunity, then you may only go after the buyer part and they may go out, you know, go to another agent for the listing. Um, as you guys go out there and door knock as well, you're going to be meeting other neighbors who are thinking of selling as well. So I want to give you guys some strategy, some insight, some mindset um, so that you can go out there and capture these opportunities and, you know, set up appointments and then take it to the next level. And then we're also going to go over our three-step process. So you guys have an understanding of what the listing process is like. Because I think for many people, especially if you're newer, you don't know exactly what happens during a listing, right? This is not going to be a listing presentation training. That's a different training, right? When you're actually going to meet the seller and what you do on the appointment, that's a whole training in its own of how to do a listing presentation and how to, uh, you know, negotiate commission and do all that stuff. That's its own training. And we could spend a lot of time on that. We'll do that on another time. This is going to be more of an overview to help you understand the big picture and connect the dots. This way you can look for those opportunities and, and try to book some appointments on those. Um, so first off, guys, we got to start off with the mindset of a seller, right? Because a lot of us have worked with buyers or we're familiar with the buying process. Um, and it's different than when you're working with a seller, right? There's a whole different mindset for a buyer versus a seller. For a buyer, it's more of, you know, a lot of times they want their hand held. They want to look for property. It's the fun part, right? Like go search for home, see if it fits my criteria, prepare the offer, negotiate. And we're waiting and we're seeing if the seller is going to accept our offer or counter offer us. And usually buyers are a lot more uh, receptive or could be easier to work with initially, right? Because you're helping them buy a house, right? Like at the end of this, you know, process, they're going to get the keys to their property. So they have something they're looking forward to, right? So it's just a different mindset going in. With the seller, it's a whole process, right? It's a headache. I got to get my home ready. I got to pack. I got to move. I got to stage. I got to clean it up. Uh, I got to have people coming into my house, right? I want to make sure I get the most money. For my property, the market, you know, is it a good time to sell? Am I going to get, you know, what I can get, right? So they're coming at it from a different mindset of they're hoping that everything goes right so that they can ultimately walk away with the most money and have the smoothest process as well, right? So you're on a different kind of side of the sword when you're dealing with sellers um, because expectations are a lot higher also for sellers, right? Because they're looking for someone that's going to negotiate that's going to represent them, that's going to ultimately get them the most money in their pocket at the end of the sale. So you guys see the, the differences there, right? Um, and I find that to work with sellers, because I worked with a lot of sellers, I worked on both sides, and then I worked mainly with only with sellers. Um, it requires a bit more assertiveness, you have to lead them, you have to be able to really show them why you're the best negotiator. Like from when you come in, from when you meet with them, from how you talk to them, from the way you position yourself, they're looking for someone that's going to help them negotiate, right? They want a shark. Because think about it. Like if you were going to sell your home, wouldn't you want like a dope ass negotiator, like a shark to be the one representing you, right? If you were going to go to court for like a murder trial, wouldn't you want the best attorney representing you that's going to, you know, really go out there and get you the best result at the end, um, right? For buyers, a lot of times they want someone they can more connect with and it's going to be fun and we're going to see homes and all that warm and fuzzy stuff. Um, so it's just different, guys. Um, what questions do you have regarding the mindset of a seller? I want to make sure that that's established. The mindset. Confidence. Is that a question? Oh, what question? No, do you have? What question? Do you have oh, any questions? questions. Oh, I think Was that just clear? Just or is there any questions on, on, uh, yes. on the mindset of a seller? Okay. Um, any questions? Okay. What's the biggest no's, don'ts. The biggest what? Don'ts. Like don'ts, what not don't to do? Do, it, oh, yeah. don't do as an agent or as 
as the seller. As so the you're, seller? You're the seller of like the actual seller, you know, the house seller. Yeah, so we're we're trying to position ourselves to go find sellers and get the sellers to meet with us to help them sell their house, right? Um, and I'll go over some mistakes that agents make in a second when they're trying to like book an appointment. So sellers are more like business transactional right? It is. More business transaction. There's more project management, yeah. right? Because you have to not only uh, go through the whole escrow process, but there's a lot of trans, uh, project management just to get the home on the market, right? Most homes are going to require some level of preparation, right? Especially in today's market when we want to be as competitive as possible, we want to showcase our property as best as possible. You're going to want to do some level of preparation to the property, right? And I'll go over that in a second. So there's a lot of project management that comes into play, right? Of knowing like what recommendations to give the seller. Like, should they do repairs? Should they not? Should they paint? Should they carpet? Should they just leave it alone, right? Like what, where to put money into? So it does require you having another skill set of being able to understand like what's going to make their home sell for more. Um, what stuff do we focus on? What stuff do we not focus on? Is there a budget? You know, things of that sort. So it does require you to have more of like a business transaction mindset versus just making them feel good right um so the next point guys is why do people sell motive right there's there's got to be some motivation if you're going to sell your home right because so why do people sell they want a bigger house just shout them out bad news they got bad news they got a, they got a downgrade they lost their job relocation right? Maybe they want to tap into the equity to do something else with it, right? Uh, maybe they want to downgrade. Maybe they want to upgrade, right? They have a condo. They want a single family or they're older now and they don't need this big house and they want to downsize, right? Okay. Or they want to retire and move out of state or, you know, there's a death in the family or there's a divorce and they got to sell, right? Or there's a bankruptcy. They, they lost their house, right? So there's many reasons why someone's going to sell. So knowing why they are going to sell is extremely important because then you're going to tailor the conversation, right? To be more sensitive to a certain situation. If someone died and they're having to sell because someone died and they can no longer afford the home or it's a death situation, they may not want to sell, right? But they have to. So that's the other thing to understand, right? When someone's looking to buy, it's because they decide they want to buy, right? Like we're excited. Let's go do it. When someone sells, it could be that they don't want to sell, but they're forced to sell. So then you're going to be dealing with that sort of client where maybe they're dragging their feet or maybe they're reluctant or maybe they're a little skeptical. Maybe they're fearful. Maybe they're frustrated or upset about the situation. So knowing why someone is going to sell is extremely important um, so that you can give the best advice and that you can handle the client with that much more care. Right. And here's the thing is there has to be a motivation for someone to sell. There has to be a strong enough reason why someone would pack all their shit, let strangers into their house, do inspections, do repairs, and do all that stuff and put their house on the market and hope that they get a, bit, a good price. There has to be a strong motivation. Uh, selling because the market's hot is not a motivation, right? People sell because there's some sort of life event happening that is motivating them to sell. And that's important. I want to say that again, because sometimes you may have sellers that are more chasing the market or yeah, the market's hot. Maybe I should sell and cash in. Okay, well then what are you going to go after? All right? When you do sell, what do you do with that money? So if there's no full plan, they're not going to be motivated, right? If they're only motivated by the money, right? Then that's the, the, the client that's going to give you a lot of pushback when you're asking them to do things to sell you know, the right way. So not all sellers or all people who pretend to be sellers should be selling or end up selling, right? So it's important for you guys to know that because sometimes we get like a little, a little hint of a seller and then we're like, oh, this is, a, let's go after this one, right? And then we talk to them and they're just not really motivated. Hey, are you willing to paint your house? Because the house needs to be painted. Hasn't been painted in 20 years. No, I don't want to do that. Just sell it. Okay, well then I might not be able to get you the price that you want. Well, if you can't give me the price I want, I don't want to sell. And that's not a good enough reason, right? If it's like, hey, I need to sell because I'm retiring, I'm moving out of state, therefore I'm willing to do all these things to make sure it's, it's a good sale and I get the best price, 
that's a motivated seller, right? Or, hey, like I'm having another baby. We can no longer fit in this condo. It's a two bedroom condo. I got four kids. Like I need another house. It's time to upgrade. Like we're willing to do what it takes. You know, that's someone that you want to sell, right? But just someone that says it's a good time to sell or I'll only sell if it's just only based off price and there's not some sort of life event or special event happening that is going to push them, then those aren't sellers that we want to, we want to go after, right? So it's important because when you're out there talking to people, you may get an opportunity that seems like an opportunity, but as we dig a little bit deeper, right? You're going to be like, yeah, this is not really a hot one, right? So you always have to ask questions, right? And we'll go into some of that right now. You always got to ask questions. You always got to understand why are you choosing to sell right now? In fact, that's a question that we ask on our appointment. They say, why sell this property? It's a beautiful home. Why even sell it? We do a reverse psychology. We do a takeaway, right? Like, hey, I wouldn't sell this home. It's beautiful. Why do you want to sell this place? And then that gets them to tell you why. And then they start selling you on why they need to sell, right? So there's different tactics, right? To find out someone's motivation. So any questions on why people sell? Make sense? Good stuff. And feel free to ask questions at any time, guys, because I want to make sure this is, you know, it's not just me talking. I want to make sure if you don't understand something, like ask the question so I can explain it and make sure you understand it correctly. Um, okay. Positioning yourself for the appointment, right? Let's say you're out there door knocking. You're out there, you get a buyer lead and you find out they have a property they sell or you talk to a friend or family that's think of, thinking of selling, right? Or whatever, you get a lead from somewhere and they're thinking of selling. How do you position yourself to set up that appointment, right? The biggest mistake agents make is as soon as they someone hints that they want to sell, especially newer agents, oh, great, let's be, let me, let, let us sell your house for you. And they get all excited and they already want to get to the finish line of saying, hey, let me sell your house. It's like, no, 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 no. We got to back up. Why are you selling? We got to see if, we got to see if it makes sense. Right. We got to see if there's a plan. We got to see if we can even help you. We got to see if your expectations are realistic. Right. So you never want to just get all excited and have commission breath. You know, when someone hints at selling and like, hey, let us sell your house. Right. Let us come out there and sell your house for you because it doesn't work that way. Right. When someone sells a house, it's a consultation. It's a process. We got to go figure out. It's almost like going to the doctor. Right. If something's wrong with someone. You, you don't just call the doctor and the doctor says, Oh yeah, let me just give you this medication. No, you got to go in, they check your temperature, they check your blood pressure, your height, your weight. You do a, con a consultation, they, you know, they diagnose you, maybe you need an x-ray, maybe you need all these things. And then at the end, then they say, okay, based off all that, this is what I recommend. This is how we're going to help you. This is what we're going to do. This is what I'm going to prescribe you, right? So the biggest mistake that, that agents make is they try to give someone a prescription without diagnosing them first. Does that make sense? I had that last night. I had one of my SOIs. She hit me up and was like, I think I want to sell my house. I want more land. I want something bigger. I told everybody this morning. And so I got some, I read through her whole text, a long text. Before I said anything, I had it mind. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to say shit to her that's wrong or anything. What should I do with this one? Yeah. And then Maori walked me through it, she said, tell her this, try and book a consult so we can see exactly what you're saying, why she wants to sell. Can she buy another house before we sell? Can we do this? Can we do that? Because she was like, if I find in Livermore, Tracy, I want more land. If I find the house I want, I will buy. Yeah. I will make the move. So I, uh, I'm i setting up a consult with Maori so we can go to that. So. Awesome. I didn't, I didn't say. Yeah, that's a good example, right? Because to sell your house, to buy another one and you want land, like all these things have to happen for that to work. So it isn't like you just like, oh, I see that property. That's a good one. Snap your fingers and your home sold and that one's bought. That's not the way it works. There's a whole process we got to do to even position this home to be sold and get the right amount of money that we need to buy that home. There's all kinds of details that have to happen in between. And we need to assess if that's even uh, possible, if it's reasonable. Is the seller willing to do what it takes to make that happen, right? So that's where we got to do this whole consultation to see where their motivation's at, right? So it's like if you were to go to a mechanic and the mechanic just says, oh yeah, dude, I need to change your transmission and he never opened your hood, 
of your car mm-hmm. or he never got under there and checked it right or he never ran a diagnostic test on it or anything and he just heard the clicking oh yeah your transmission's out it's going to be eighteen thousand dollars and you know i'm gonna we can get that done in three weeks and blah 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 right like it's not the way it works but what most agents do is like oh you want to sell all right great yeah we'll help you sell Let, like let's go out there so we can help you sell right they're just they're all excited and happy right so we don't want to do that we want to calm down and we want to say okay great hey you know it sounds like selling maybe you know in the picture let me ask you why do you want to sell all right what are your plans once you sell where do you plan to go right why sell now versus waiting right like questions like that and what you really want to do is you want to position yourself to set up a consultation with them on selling right because we don't after that consultation a couple things are going to happen we're going to see does it make sense we're going to see do they want to sell with us right uh or we're going to determine hey does it make sense and hey i don't even want to take your listing because this really makes sense you're asking for three million comps are only two million like it's, it's not it's not feasible right maybe we got to wait till the market goes up high enough those are the things that can happen so when someone says they're thinking of selling you say hey great you know, I'm excited. Thanks for sharing that with me. What I would love to do is come out to your home and give you a consultation, right? And in our consultation, here's what we're going to look at. We're going to go over your plan. We're going to f- go into detail of, of what the selling process is all about. I'm going to talk about the market, right? And give you the pros and cons of selling now versus waiting. And I'll also give you a few different, different options on how you can sell your home, right? There's many ways to approach this thing. But at the end of our consultation, you're going to have a clear understanding of where you know where you stand does it make sense and also are we a good fit are we a good match for you to to get you to the next stage of your life right not like hey yeah let's come out there let's we're going to sell your house for you right like it's a, two different things all right we're coming from an advisor role a consultative you know role we're positioning ourselves as someone who's going to go out there and really figure out what's right for the client and see if we can make that happen for them and give them advice that's going to, you know, help them get to the next step. So don't ever, and and here's the thing, guys, is you always want to do that with any client, right? Buyer or seller, right? Buyer or seller. That's why we set up buyer consultations, right? And that's why we say, hey, when we meet, we're going to get the loan officer. We're going to understand your finances. We're going to go over your criteria, right? We're going to see what you're looking for. Then we're going to come up with a game plan to get you there. Same type of thing when you're selling a home, right? We're going to meet with you, come up with the game plan, go over all the details, show you what we do, you know, to help you sell for the most amount of money and and go from there. Now, let's get this straight, guys, is every seller wants the most amount of money, right? They want the most amount of money, right? Does that always happen? No, it doesn't happen. But here's what they want. Most amount of money is extremely important, right? (laughs) Easiest process, right? Smooth process, that's also important. You know, less hassle, a smooth process, a shorter timeline to work with their timeline and stuff like that. They want to be guided. They want to be advised. It's a combination of all of those things, right? But at the end of the day, like if I was going to go with you or I was going to go with you and you guys both offer the same level of service, you guys have the same level of experience, like at the end of the day, I'm going to want ultimately to see who's going to get me the best result as well, right? So they always want the most money, right? They always want the smoothest process. They always want the least amount of hassles and they want to be advised and guided and they want to make sure that what you say you're going to do happens. Now, in some cases, some sellers are willing to compromise on the money because maybe there's a special need. Maybe there's a sense of urgency. Maybe they don't want to deal with certain things to get the most amount of money. They don't want to go through the hassle of prepping their home, but they're willing to take less on the property, right? So those are things we explore when we meet with them. And that's why we say, hey, once we meet, we're going to go over the different options of how you can sell your home. There's not only one way to sell a home. There's different ways to sell a home. Right. So let's talk about that. What are the different ways you can sell your home? Um, in terms of like marketing and who you sell it to and stuff like that. You do a, like an off market sale. You can do an off market sale, right? Doesn't go on the MLS. 
It's like, hey, I'm going to let you, you know, list my home, but I don't want you to advertise it out there. I only want you to advertise it to people, you know, maybe your list of buyers. I'm private. I don't want my neighbor knowing I'm selling or, hey, I'm getting a divorce. I don't want people to know, blah, blah, blah. So there's like private sales, right? A lot of like celebrities do things like that. Maybe they don't want the whole public knowing they're selling their home. Um, and then some people who are going through a situation may want to do like an off-market sale. Or some people want to, may want to do an off-market sale just to test out the market. Hey, before I have all kinds of people coming through my home and I have pictures on the internet and all that stuff, see what you can do and advertise it off-market. You know, see if you can bring me a buyer. And if you do, then we'll get it sold. You know, we'll go from there. That's one way, right? Uh, what's another way to get your home sold? Cash offer, quick close. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a cash offer, right? Sell it to an investor, sell it to a cash buyer. Um, a lot of times you're going to compromise on the price, but you're going to get it sold fast and you don't have to do anything. But you may save some money on commissions, right? Because you may not pay all the commission that you would pay for someone to fully market your home. So sometimes it could be a win-win. It's like, all right, I'll give up a little on the price, but I'm not paying so much on commissions and I save time and I just get it sold because I need that money really fast because I'm going to do something with that money. Maybe I have another opportunity that's waiting for me. Um, maybe I need to move quick because I got a job relocation and needs to be sold fast. And selling to investors doesn't always mean you're going to get less, but sometimes you do. There are some investors who maybe are just want the land and are going to knock the home down and rebuild this mega mansion on it. And they may still pay you a good price because they're going to add value to that property. Right. So it's going to be a case by case thing, but that's one way, right? Sell it to a cash buyer quick and easy. Um, what's the other way? What's the most traditional way people sell a home? You on market. Open market, MLS. Exactly. Open market, MLS, um, right? Put it out there to the public, do an open house, all that, put the sign in the front, your standard listing, right? That people see all the time, right? You see a sign across on a house, it's advertised, it's on Redfin, Zillow, Trulia, MLS, all those sites. Now, even with going on the open market, there's different ways you can sell your house as well, right? So let's say you're going to go on the open market, but you, for sale by owner, that's another way, right? We'll go over that in a second. Um, for sale, well, let's go talk about that now and then we'll go back to MLS. For sale by owner is an owner trying to actually sell the home themselves, right? And they're, they're gonna put their own little sign in front of the house that they buy at Home Depot, or they're gonna put it on Craigslist, or they're gonna put it on Zillow on the for sale by owner you know, portal. And they're gonna say, all right, hey agents, I'm selling, bring me a buyer, right? And I'll pay you a commission. There are pros and cons, right? Uh, the pro is that if they do sell it successfully, they might save some money on commission. Now, when the market was really, really hot, like a year or two ago, there were many for sale by owners because there was low inventory that were actually getting their home sold and they were getting a good price. And the buyer agent who brought the buyer was just doing all the paperwork for them. So it's going to be market specific right now in today's market where homes are sitting longer and then the market's slowing down a little. For sale by owners are a lot tougher because you need more exposure. You know, you need more marketing. You have a question? Yeah, so the buyer agent and the marketing, it depends. So there's different ways, right? The buyer agent could say, hey, I'll just do the paperwork, but I'm not your agent, right? I don't represent you, but I'm just going to do the paperwork as a courtesy because I'm representing my buyer. Or the buyer agent could say, hey, I'm going to represent you. I'm going to do a dual agency. I'll maybe give you a discount, right, on the commission since I already have the buyer. So there's different options even within that, right? But the whole the whole thing for you guys to understand is that, yeah, there's people that try to sell their home on their own through a for sale by owner process. Um, now, the con with that is that if you've never done that before, you can get yourself into some sticky situations because in the state of California, there's certain things you gotta disclose, there's certain paperwork that needs to be done right? There's certain legalities that need to happen. So um, there are services that have popped up or, hey, I'll charge you a flat fee to handle that part for you. But there are also, you know, for sale by owners that don't even know about those things and just they have no protection, right? So when you have an agent involved in the process, the agent is now carrying a liability for you as well, right? 
the seller is always liable for certain things, but then when you have an agent in the mix, they're licensed, there's a broker, you know, who's licensed. So there's, you're shifting some of that liability to the, the agent. Uh, we won't go too deep into for sale by owners, but just know like there's people that try to sell their home on their own and it works sometimes depending on the market, right? Now back to um, selling on the market, right? The open market, the traditional way, right? Where you put the sign in front of the yard, it goes on the MLS, you do all that stuff, you open houses like you normally see. Um, so we, even within that, there's a couple of different options, right? Some clients are going to choose to not do any sort of preparation to their home. I want it on the MLS because I know it's going to give me more exposure. All the agents are going to see it. It's going to go on all the websites, all the public sites and everything, but I just want to throw it on the market. I want to do minimal effort and get my home on the market. And sometimes if you guys were to go on the MLS or go on Zillow, you'll see homes. You'll see homes that clearly look different. Like, oh, this one looks badass. They staged it. The photos are great. You can tell they painted it. They did all the stuff. And this one, it looks like they just took their pictures with like a old school, old school phone. They didn't do anything, right? Like you see toilet paper, like all like, you know, coffee mugs. And it just looks like they just slapped the photos on there and threw a sign in front of the yard, right? So even within the MLS and even within, you know, agents that go out there and try to get sellers, there's different caliber, caliber and different levels of agents, right? With us, uh, what we are known for and the reputation that we have is to fully market properties, right? And that's why you'll see some of you guys are going door knocking today, right? We door knock the neighborhood. We do professional photos. We have a website. We have, you know, DJ, who's our marketing guy who makes social media stuff, right? So we do, we're a full service agency um, because we know that that sells homes faster and for more money. The better a home is marketed, uh, Right you're going to get a return on that investment. You know, if you stage a home and if you prep it and the photos look great versus a home that's not prepped, well, the one that's prepped is going to get more eyeballs, more attention, more people going towards that property. Um, I'm telling you guys this stuff because it's, it's good that you understand just overall how the process works, right? And what you're going up against. Now, to keep it simple for you guys, when you're talking to a potential seller, your goal is to book the appointment. Your goal is to book the consultation. It isn't to sell them right there on why they need to list with you. It's to sell them on why they need to meet with you and what you're going to go over in the meeting, right? So like I said earlier, you always want to go in for that consultation. Hey, let's meet up for a consultation. Um, I even like to say, hey, let us interview for the process because you got to assume they may be talking to more than one agent as well, right? Nowadays, everything's online. You can go online and find an agent. You can click on Zillow, Redfin. You can look people up. Everyone knows an agent nowadays. So a lot of times sellers might be talking to more than one agent, right? Um, once in a while, they might only talk to one, but I say for the most part, they're talking to at least two, three, four. And also any seller in any neighborhood is receiving marketing from agents as well. There might be an, an agent that markets to that neighborhood or farms that neighborhood. So they're getting flyers and stuff like that. So you always want to say, hey, when we meet, you know, we're going to interview for the process or we're going to come out there. We're going to give you a consultation. We're going to go over all the things you need to know. We're going to go over your plan. We're going to develop a custom plan to get you from here to where you're trying to be. Right. And we'll explain the pros, the cons, the different options you have on how you can sell your home, um, the different resources that we bring to the table. And at the end of this, you know, we'll see if it's a good fit. We'll see if it makes sense. Right. That's how I want you guys positioning the appointment. Um, any questions so far, guys? Tyler. Do most of your seller leads that you end up working with, are they um, usually long nurtured? Yes. Yeah. So that's good. That's good that you brought that up. Uh, Tyler's question was, are most of the seller leads we work with, are they, are they usually a long-term nurture? The answer is yes, right? The biggest resource for sellers is your SOI, right? Because here's the thing. When someone buys, they can just go online and say, oh, I like that house. Let me click on the agent. Let me click on, and it goes to Zillow or Redfin or whatever site, and boom, it's more of a transaction. When someone's deciding to sell, that's like a thing that they got to think about, right? They, by the time they reach out to an agent or decide to talk to an agent, they've been thinking about this for a while. 
right? And usually they meet with an agent in the early stages to understand what they got to do, if it makes sense, or even just understand where they're at, what their home could sell for and all that stuff, right? So it's usually a long-term nurture, right? So if you want to work with sellers and you want to get more listing opportunities, just understand you're going to have to nurture the hell out of people. And a lot of times sellers will choose either someone they know to list their home or someone that they were referred to, or it could be like a top agent in their neighborhood that's been marketing to their neighborhood for many years. And they already see that person like, oh, that's the top agent. That's the top agent in my neighborhood, right? It's rare. It's not, you know, it's not unlikely, but it's not as common that someone says, hey, I want to sell. Let me just go hit up a bunch of agents online. Right. They already use they usually have someone in mind that has built a relationship with them. Either it could have started off as a cold lead and someone that's been nurturing them for quite some time and giving them information or someone that, you know, they decided they were going to work with already. So I know with us, a lot of sellers that we work with came from people that we knew. Right. They were either clients of ours already that referred us to someone or they may be a buyer that was looking to sell and we were helping them buy. So then we got the, the sale or it's a family member, right? Or they're referred, you know, from our client to someone else. Um, those are the majority of them, right? Or it's someone that maybe we met like at an open house and then we just stayed in touch with them for a long time, you know, and built that relationship. And they already saw that we sold the home in their neighborhood. So we've nurtured that relationship over time. Um, and that's how we get a lot of, a lot of sellers. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So it's definitely a nurture game, guys, because someone doesn't just sell overnight. It's a drawn out process. Are your conversations usually different with them um, on like the first couple of calls before you like kind of go through appointments? Yeah, you always want to assess the timeline, right? So conversations are, are generally different because think about it. Like when you get a buyer lead, it's like, all right, great. Let's meet. Let's go look at a house today, right? It's a quicker process, right? When it's a seller lead, it's like, oh, okay, hey, great. You want to sell like, hey, you know, where do you want to go? What's your timeline, right? When were you thinking of selling? When would you like your home to actually be sold and the money be in your bank account? So depending on when they say that is when we're going to recommend for us to meet, right? If they say, hey, I'm not, want, I'm not wanting to sell for another year. I just want to get some information. It's two approaches, right? You can say, hey, well, let's stay in touch. And then as we get closer, we'll come out and meet you. Or you can say, hey, I want to get in front of this person to make an impression. And then I'm going to continue to nurture them, which I would recommend doing number two, yeah. right? <laughs> I would say, hey, great. I know you're a year out, but a year can go by fast, you know, and if opportunities come up, your timeline may change. So I think it's best that we meet at least just to get the, some information going and at least develop a plan this way in a year you're ready, right? No pressure. I totally understand you want to sell for in a year. I'm not even, I'm not going to ask you to move forward and like that. I just want to make sure you have the information so that we can prepare you to sell because there may be some things that you want to start now or start soon so that your home is, is prime and ready to make the most money when it goes on the market, right? Hey, when can I stop by for just a couple minutes and chat? You know, and that's how I would approach it. And then you go out there, you meet them. It's a softer, you know, sell, you give them information, you give them value. Maybe you might do a quick little listing presentation and you say, hey, great, what do you think? You have questions. Now let's stay in touch now. And as we get closer, we can start putting some things together, right? Um, I had a had one seller that I worked with. I remember this one because we were sending postcards to a neighborhood. We sold one home and then we were marketing a neighborhood and she responded to a postcard, right? Hey, got your postcard. I saw you sold the home across the street, blah, blah, blah. Uh, me and my husband are thinking of selling next year, right? It was still like a year out. You know, just wanted to get some information or uh, want to see, you know, what the homes are going for. So I came out there and met her, right? Same exact thing. I went and met her did like, you know, a, a soft kind of listing presentation, walked around, told her what we would do, what I recommended. And then it was the nurture game. Every couple months, just following up. Hey, I was just checking in. I put her on a drip campaign. I put on a home value campaign. She was getting home values from me every month. Um, I would call her every couple months just to check in, say hello, let her know what we're up to, see how she's doing. Let her know about the home that just sold down the street. Just say, hey, I'm just going to keep you informed. And then once you're ready, we'll We'll sit down and, and kind of go over some some solid plans. 
then the timeline changed then it became a year and then she was like hey you know we haven't forgot about you she actually called me right she's like but i think it's gonna be a few more months my husband's job because he was gonna retire right um it's gonna be a few more months we're just waiting for this boss to let him know when he can retire okay great let's just you know stay in touch so back to the nurture plan stayed in touch and then um she called me actually she's like hey i just want to let you know like we got a date now like this is when He's thinking of retiring, you know, so maybe we should meet and kind of see what we got to start doing, get the ball rolling. But that whole process probably took 14 months of nurturing. You know, and every time I would talk to them, it was just value, give them value, give them value, build the relationship, see how they're doing. Right. And then after a while, when I would call them, they already knew it was me. They would answer, hey, Enrique, they have my number saved. Right. They were still getting postcards in the mail. They were still getting emails from me with their home value. And they were getting phone calls, personal calls from me, just checking in. If they didn't answer, I'd leave them a message. Hey, it's Enrique. I just want to check in on you. Hope everything's good. I want to let you know, hey, another home sold down the street. This is what it sold for. Just want to keep you up to date. Let me know if you guys need anything. Long-term game. But that one sale led to five more sales in that neighborhood within that same like two blocks right there. So we got them, then we got the neighbor directly across the street because they talked, they both lived there for 30 plus years. Then as we were marketing this home and passing out flyers, the guy on the court next door hit up Rob, we got that sale, right? And then I think we got another one down the street. And then uh, we met someone at that open house and it took four years to nurture that guy. Yeah, we just sold it. That guy, that's the one we sold. Yeah, yeah. You and Rob sold that one, right? And we got the neighbor. And then you guys have got another neighbor. So we probably got maybe six sales total, right? A few of them happened right away. And then a, two more came like a couple years later. And it was the same thing, just nurturing, just staying in touch with those guys, right? So as you see, guys, it's a long-term game. But the key with, with sellers is you build a pipeline, right? You build a pipeline, you stay in touch with them, and then you're going to have some that hit, right? And you got you to gotta build that pipe. Um, and it's, a, it's, it's just understanding that this is a long game, right? You can't make someone sell like that. Occasionally, you'll get the people like, oh, I got a situation. I got to sell, right? And then those fall on your lap. I've had some of those. Uh, I got a listing right now. Uh, a family member, their mom died. Parents died. She inherited the house. She has siblings. Um, she's the executor of the trust. Yeah, it took... Uh, it took from when we started talking, it took like a year and a half, right? She had to get some things in order, some legal stuff. Her brother was living in the property, had to get him out. Finally, we got access to the home. Um, there was two homes, actually, two homes. So we got finally got one sold. And then we still have the other home that still needs to be sold. So she's in the process. We sold one, got some money. She's getting her brothers out of that one. And then we're going to go out there and fix that one up. So total timeline, probably two and a half years two listings, two sales. And those are just complete referrals, right? Family member knows I'm in the business, called me, hey, Enrique, got these two houses, gonna need your help. Uh, and that's how it goes, guys. Um, okay, what questions do you have so far? For the postcards, do you send them especially to the client only or in the whole neighborhood? Using neighborhood. Right. So there's different ways to do it. Like you can farm a neighborhood where you're saying, Hey, I'm going to like, I want to work this neighborhood. I want to tap into this neighborhood and I'm going to invest into sending postcards every month. Right. And that becomes part of your long-term strategy. Um, but that takes time though. Right. When you start a farm, it's something like you're just planting seeds. You're not going to get instant results as people have to start knowing you. Right. But over time, if you stay in, in it, you're going to get some business just from people who see your name all the time. If Imagine like if you sent a postcard twice a month for five years straight, people are going to know who you are, right? Yeah. yeah. And there's agents that built their business off farming. You know, in the beginning, they were doing a lot of like the, the hustling, like working open houses, door knocking, cold calling. And then they started their farm. And like 10 years later, now that farm has just grown and they're constantly getting business from that farm. Or there's agents that have been farming a neighborhood for 20 years and like they're the king of that neighborhood, right? Um, question. I have a question. Um, 
uh, for buyers, we take down a lot of information before we book the consultation. Mm -hmm. We ask for LP Mama. Mm -hmm. What do we usually ask to uh, for seller? So that's a good question. So in in the Google Drive, there's a script for sellers. It's called like the SQS mm -hmm. seller questionnaire or something. And it's basically all the questions that I just role played you guys through, like where are you going, why are you going, you know, what's your timeline, um, and that's basically the script, okay. right? So if you look up SQS, I'll put it in Slack for you guys, so you guys have quick access to it. But it's it's basically what we just talked about. It's just on one sheet, like an LP model, and you just go down the list. Yeah, and just and here's what happens, guys. Is is if you learn the LP mama, right, and you learn the SQS, that that's what we call it. Like you can talk to anyone, right? Because it's the same questions that you ask over and over. These are just the same general qualifying questions that allows you to decide, is this someone that we got to book an appointment with now? Do we continue to nurture them? And you gauge kind of where they're at, right? What was your question? Lisa? So I think it's kind of like farm your lead. So say you've got the leads, but they haven't yet made it to a consultation where, you know, you put them with a lender who collected their data. You still want to maybe send them a postcard, not because say like text and email, and phone calls isn't really getting too far, mm -hmm. but you still want to be top of mind and send them something. How would you go about asking for their address? It is scary way. Yeah. Um, I want to mail you. Yeah. So if you want to farm like your leads, right? There's different ways to farm. So that's the other thing too, is, and I'll, I'll touch on that. You can farm a neighborhood. You can farm a specific list of clients. Right. Let's say you have like all your friends and family, you build a list of 100 people that you just want them to know what you do. Maybe it's friends, family, colleagues, maybe like uh, people who might be able to refer you clients, your tax preparer, your CPA, your barber, like people who like are influential people and you put them all on the list and then you just farm to them. So farming doesn't have to be a neighborhood. It could be a list of people. Right. It could be your leads that you have. And you want to just do something extra, right? You want to send them a postcard, you know? So that's something you can do. Um, here's the thing though, is when you're going to send someone information, you have to make sure it's valuable, right? So if you're going to ask someone for their address, you may want to let them know what you're going to give them, right? Like, hey, I put out a monthly newsletter that has a lot of valuable information, you know? Um, and I send it out via mail. Can I add you to my list, right? It's just general information about the market, what's going on. It's going to be really valuable to you once you decide to buy or sell and then ask that way. Because if you're just like, hey, let me get your address. They're going to, what do you mean you want my address, right? A newsletter. Yeah, a newsletter or something of value, right? And, and usually when people farm, when people farm any demographic or any neighborhood or any list, it's always going to be like uh, useful information, right? Or information that keeps you top of mind, or it could be like your birthday or something, right? Just stuff that keeps you top of mind. Farming is a slow process. It's something where you're every time they get something, you're planting a seed. It isn't like you're gonna send one thing and like, oh shoot, that was the best newsletter I've ever seen. Like sell all my houses, right? Doesn't work that way, right? It's it's the fact that you've been in touch with them and you've been building value over time, right? That you they now see you as the expert and see you as someone they would want to work with. All right. Um, so yeah, does that help answer your question? Yeah, and it's like it, I just was wondering how to get their ass without asking for it, but sending them something to them. Does that make sense? And then that's why you would mostly have all those addresses. That makes sense. I just didn't think about it. Yeah. What I would do is definitely my SOI. I would put them on like some sort of postcard or some something in the mail. But before you do that, remember that sending postcards and farming like letters and stuff, that requires more um legwork right that requires you to come up with the content get it printed pay for postage get your mailers on there maybe you hire a third-party service it's gonna it's an investment right um and it does work right but just know that it's there's more legwork to it right to make it happen so before you did that i would make sure you're doing the other stuff at a higher level i want to make sure everyone's on a text message campaign Everyone's on a home value, you know, through Firepoint, because that's just a click of a couple buttons, right? I would make sure everyone's on a property search. And then I would record my own market update or helpful information video, and I would email that to them every single month. That's something that you can do that is more scalable, 
more affordable, a lot higher leverage, right? Because think about it, if you want to send like 100 postcards every month, I mean, you could pay someone to do it. Or if you're going to be licking stamps yourself, like that requires time, right? Versus I can say, I can record one video, a three minute freaking market update or tip of the week or tip of the month or what's going on or what you need to know. I can record that in five minutes, maybe edit it, put it on YouTube, and now I can blast that to thousands of people, right? So it's a lot, it's working smarter and utilizing technology to get further reach, right? So I would make sure you're doing that first before you started doing the farm. Now, if you did both of them, then that's awesome, right? Do that one and then you add that one on there. Now you're hitting them from different angles. They're getting texts, they're getting home values, they're getting properties, they're getting monthly videos and they're getting a postcard. That's called a multi-layered approach and that's the most effective way. Because there'll be some people that open your emails. There'll be some people that get your postcard and toss it in the mail. There'll be some people that respond to text, right? But you're hitting all the angles and it's like, boom, top of mind. Lisa sent me this. Lisa sent me this. Oh, hey, look, it's Lisa. Oh, hey, properties from Lisa. Oh, hey, this from Lisa, right? Like when it's time to buy or sell, you're the obvious choice. Yeah. So that's why I like social media. I think it's just, just leverage and it's where people are at. Like even people you don't think would be on social media have a Facebook. When your grandparents or your parents start having Facebook or Instagram, then you know it's like, all right, I need to freaking be posted on there. <laughs> right? Like back in the day, like, you know, when social media was barely getting popular, you could have made the argument like, well, a lot of my clients are older. They're not on there. But it's like, no, they're on there today. Whether they post or whether they just consume, right? Most people just consume content. Just remember that. Most people don't post. My dad has uh, Facebook and Instagram now. I yeah. never thought he would have that. Does he ever post? No. Nope. But does he watch all my stories? Does he comment on everything? Does he comment on everything? <laughs> Recently, he started posting. Recently, he started posting. Like he's out, you know, with Blanca's my stepmom. You guys know that, right? He's out with I Blanca. Yeah. So Blanca's my mom, right? So recently <laughs> he started posting, right? Like he'll post every often. And I'm like, dude, if you're not posting on social media, like you're missing the whole world, right? <laughs> so make sure you're checking all those boxes off before you go try this other postcard thing, right? That's the message. <laughs> um and here's the thing too, right? You want sellers? What do sellers want to know? What's valuable to a seller? What information? Prices, home prices in their area. Home prices. What their home is worth. What the market's doing. Remember, what do sellers at the end of the day, what do they want? The most money. So anything that's going to show them on how to get the most money is going to be valuable, right? Or where they stand with their money. What your home is worth, that's telling them where their money's at, right? This is what your asset's worth. How to make more money, right? What to do to your home to make more money? Prepping, you know, staging, do you paint? What color to paint? You guys know paint colors change every year? Like the, the color of the year, you know, they come out with, this is the color of the year, right? Or these are, these are the colors that are in. If you want to know what colors are in, go to a new construction. They pay a lot of money for professional designers. Whatever colors you see there, make a video and say, hey guys, want to let you know about the latest trends. This is what's popular. This is what's in new construction, right? So if you're going to market your home, these are the colors you want to be painting your home because this is popular to the buyers out there. Do this and it's going to get you more money when you sell your home, right? Or you want to know about the market. This is what's happening in the market. Or you want to know about your home value. This is what's happening with your home value. So anything that has to do with home value, where they stand, tips for selling, how to prep your home, um, tax stuff, right? It's not about making money. It's also about saving money, right? Like how to save on taxes or things you need to know of, capital gains, you know, if it's an investment property, if it's primary content like that is what's going to be appealing to sellers. So if you want sellers and you're only posting content, that's like three tips to get pre-approved, you're not speaking to a seller, right? A seller may need to get pre-approved if they're going to sell and buy, but you're not speaking directly to a seller. So if you want seller leads or you want to generate seller traffic from social media, start making videos that appeal towards sellers, right? Start mixing them up, right? Um, any other questions, guys? 
Was this helpful today? Does this give you a, like a picture of what it's like to work with sellers, right? How should you position yourself? And I think that's the biggest thing with the takeaway. So I want to ask you guys, how do you, let's go over this again. I want to make sure you guys are listening. How do you position yourself to work with sellers? As like a, someone who's giving them information, providing, not like you're not trying to just get them into it, just saying like, you know, we want to see if it's right for you. Yep. And if that would provide you a good service and see, you know, so if you have the time, we'll love chat. So there you, you go. Have that with like deeper conversation later. Consultation, right? In an advisor role. Let's go figure out what's going on. Let's walk the property. Let me give you some pointers. Yes. Um, you, you get more seller leads, like it's part of the process, right? You got to talk to a lot of sellers. There's going to be some that are realistic, some that are not. Um, so that's one way to deal with that, right? Is find more sellers. Right. Um, and then the second way is just, you got to be real with people, right? When you meet them, you got to don't tell them, show them. Right. And I think the other thing is to find out what the next step is for them. Yeah to see if we can get that number for them to get them to the next step in their life, right? Yeah. They may need to sell this property, maybe unrealistic with the sales price, but we can get them enough to go move with their with their daughter that, and retire up there in Sacramento with what they're having, right? So again, it's not always just a dollar amount. It's like, a, how can we get them to the next level? How can we get them to the next stage in their life with what they're doing? It ties into motivation, right? Yeah. It's going deeper right. with their motivation. So ask you more questions. Because remember, a lot of sellers may put up the front on the outside, right? And they may play that hardball with you because they want to test you, right? They want to see, all right, are you just going to fold or are you going to actually like show them your negotiation skills? Remember, you are demonstrating when you speak to a seller to book the appointment, you are demonstrating what it would be like for them to, to work with you and negotiate. So if you can't come back and say, hey, I know this is what you want, but I think it's important that we meet so that we can see if your expectations are realistic. I also want to understand why you're even selling because I want to see if I could even help you. And when you can say that confidently, then you're going to see the guard's going to drop, right? And then once you start peeling the onion back and you go deeper to find out why they want to sell, you'll see that sometimes that number they said isn't really the number they're willing to accept, right? So it's, it's you got to go, go through that dialogue. Now you have know, work with an unrealistic seller. Yeah. But we're able to close it, you know, sell our house and buy our new house by knowing what her motivation is. Mm -hmm. So I had to do everything I can on my end, you know, being on the lending side to get her to that dream home she wanted. But she was like unrealistic. Yeah. But when we set that number, told her what we need to do, she was all for it. <laughs> and some clients need to find out, right? Like they may, this is what I want, but then, you know, if they go on the market and then they start seeing what's, what's ha actually happening. Sometimes they got to find out the hard way, right? We wish everyone would like just take our advice, but that's not human nature, right? How many times did your parents tell you not to do something and you went and did it anyways? And then once you did it and you realized and you're like, oh yeah, my parents were right, right? But you still did it, right? Yeah. I would, I would definitely figure out what the plan was. If there was no plan after that, I felt like I had, there was some teeth that I can like get them to come to a realistic standpoint, then I would say no, yeah. right? So remember, here's the thing that I learned, right? This is from one of our coaches. This is what she said. A seller will do what is required to get what they want. The question is, do they want that, right? If someone tells you, I want to move, I want to go there, they're, they're going to do what they got to do to get to where they want to go. You can't make them do that. You can educate them. You can show them. You can give them the stats. You can even put their house on the market and let them see for themselves and give them feedback, right? Um, and here's the other thing too, and this is now going deeper into like a listing presentation, but I'm just going to leave you with this because I think it's valuable, is when we meet with clients and they start off at an unrealistic, unrealistic place, we say, hey, you know what? Why don't we try it out? Why don't we try that out? But I need to have a plan in place because I'm not someone that just wants to shoot in the dark and pray. Like I'm someone that wants, I'm here to get your home sold, not to just get it on the market, right? So let's try that. But in two weeks, if we're not getting any activity, we now go to my plan. Are you in agreement with that? Let's put that in writing. In two weeks, we reduce the price. And then two weeks from there, we reduce the price again if, if we're not where we want to be. Because I understand your concern. You don't want to leave any money on the table, right? Everyone wants to make sure they're getting the most that they can. 
So sometimes to get to the result you want, you got to go a different to a different door, yeah. right? If if that other door is not working, does that make sense? Yeah. I think even in that position, Enrique's positioned himself as an authority figure. Like yeah. we're going to do this. But we're going to agree to do this if it doesn't go your way. Yeah. If it doesn't go that way, we're going to, re and they, what we learned the other day was put it in writing. Yeah. You don't even have to get it signed against that we're reducing. Yeah. Put it in writing in two weeks, right? If not sold, if no activity in two weeks, price will be reduced to this price, right? You're not going back and renegotiate. And then you set that, especially today in this market, it's even more important to do that because we're in a market where the prices are going down. Um, you got to have that conversation up front before you even take the listing on. Because last thing you want to do is spend all this time. You got the property on the market. You're like, great, I got a listing, right? We did all this work. We prepped it, photos. You did your little video tour. You're shouting it out. You door knock the whole damn neighborhood. And then the guy doesn't want to budge. And you already know that the price was kind of starting a little bit high anyways, right? So it's like, hey, let's just already have a plan for how we're going to attack our pricing strategy. And this is what you do. You don't say, I'm going to drop the price. You say, we're going to adjust the pricing strategy. Because, hey, you're dropping my price. Oh, you're giving my money away. No, this is a pricing strategy to get people in the door to get offers on the table, right? And we're going to, every week we're going to meet and we're going to see if our pricing strategy is still the best one. And it's going to be based off how many people saw the home, came to see the home, and did we get any offers? If we don't get at least 10 people to show up and see the home this week, and we don't get at least one offer, then we know our pricing strategy is probably not the correct one. So this is the plan. We're going to map it all out. Does that make sense, Mr. Seller? They can either say, yeah, that makes sense. That's fair. Or no, nah, you know what? I don't want to do that. Okay, great. I don't think we're a good fit for you. All right, guys. Um, hope you guys got some value today. A lot of stuff. Book some appointments. Remember, position yourself as the consultant. Hey, let's set a time to meet. We're going to walk through the property. Uh, you know, we're going to show you all the resources we have, how we sell homes. We're going to go over the different options you have because there's many ways you can sell your home today. We're going to see which one makes the most sense for you. And we're going to give you a game plan. And then from there, we'll see if it, you know, we'll see if it makes sense. Do the takeaway, right? We'll see if it makes sense. Because in that, what that does is it drops the guard. It's like, oh, all right, you're not selling my home. No, we got to see if it makes sense first, right? Want to see if we're a good fit. You know, we'll show you our reviews, our track record, all the all those good things. And then from there, we'll see if it makes sense for us to work together. Does that sound fair? And then you do the, the close, right? The tie down. That is what you want, right? Or that, does that sound fair? Anytime you ask someone, does that sound fair at the end? Like 90% of the time, they're going to go, yeah, that sounds fair. Why? Because it's a psychological thing. No one ever wants to not be fair, right? It's like it goes against your morals, right? That sounds fair, right? Try that shit. Use it on me. <laughs> right? It works, huh? One more thing, guys. Again, Enrique does these great trainings, but it really takes you guys to put in the work and to role play. You guys hearing it one time is not going to make you great at it. Yeah. So now that he did this, put time in your calendar, put time when you're going to go ahead and start role playing exactly when you went over. Again, to get to his level of doing it takes a lot of time and energy. He's been doing it for 20 years. But again, I, you guys got to start somewhere. So just don't just listen to them and then it's over. You guys got to practice. Yep. That's a great video. What? Like what you're saying can help us with like videos on social media. Oh, yeah. Seller, everything. Yeah, all of it, right? Uh, remember, the more you role play this, the better you are going to be on a video, right? Like because all these things, like you can turn this into a video. You can turn that script into a video when you get a seller inquiry and you send them a video message, right? Um, or you can even turn this into a video. Hey, like, we get a lot of times we have sellers that want to meet with us and a lot of agents make the mistake of just trying to go for the sale. This is how we actually approach it, right? This is a perfect video to put out, right? This is how we approach working with sellers, right? What I usually want to do is I want to come out there. I want to walk the property. I want to do this, right? And I basically just turned what I said into a video yeah. showing how you treat your sellers. And then anybody who's watching that is thinking of selling, they're going to go like, yeah, that's, that sounds really good. You know, like, yeah, she's not just trying to close me or sell me. It actually sounds like she's trying to look out for my best interest. You know, Lisa just got a brownie point with me when I'm ready to sell. And then you put the other market update and the tip video, and all that stuff, brownie points, brownie points, brownie points. And then you get the DM. Hey, Lisa, I've been following you. I've been watching your stuff. I love what you put out there. Me and my husband are thinking of selling our house. You don't do that overnight, right? You do that with consistently putting out content that positions you as the expert and the person that they would want to work with. 
right? That's why social media, guys, is you need to be posting every single day, every day, because my dad posts on social media now. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> Follow my dad. His name's. <laughs> yeah. goes live. Goes live, right? He's doing he's doing stories now, and I was like, yeah, you doing stories? Holy oh, shit! <laughs> yeah, he was at a concert. I'll, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, um, those of you guys that are here in the office, if you want to stick around, we could role play this real quick. If you guys want to team up, just spend five minutes role playing it. Unless you got to go somewhere. Thank you guys at home. Uh, let me know if you need anything. Oh, yeah.